Directing Kenny Irons behind him, number 22. Six now on the play clock. Got to get it off here. Three, two, Pinkins gets it. Looking for Irons. Gave up the middle and stopped there by number 40 for the Raging Cajuns. That's Eugene Quartang, 6'4", 235-pound defensive end out of Texas. Most of this roster, in fact, over 90% hailing from either Louisiana or Texas. You got to give the Raging Cajuns a lot of credit. They, their defense is playing pretty good down that line of scrimmage, too. And, uh, and we ain't had very much to see uh, nobody run except for Summers in the first in the first quarter. Second down, eight yards to go from the 30. Three wide out, make it four. Hart Turner is now split out right side. Pinkins looking over the middle, throws it. It's ricocheted and almost intercepted by the Rage and Cajuns. <laughs> I tell you what, on this play right here, um, on this replay right here, I tell you what, we were lucky because this guy should have intercepted the football. He batted, they batted in the air, and he just came up a little short. And I tell you what, that should have been an interception. Right and here. we don't have 35 on I, our number chart. Guys. Tell, I'd love to tell you who that was, but uh, the the roster sheet we had doesn't have a 35 for Louisiana Lafayette. Gamecocks third down and eight, one of four on third downs. Once again, four wide formation. Pinkins looking left throws it deep got a man incomplete broken up at the last second Troy Williamson had it in his hands it looked like a sure six but knocked away by the Lafayette secondary that's that's Ricky Thomas back there and I hate to sound like a broken record but another great timing play by the secondary for the Cajuns look at that play perfect timing to break up the pass I tell you what uh, just like this play the receiver should have had the ball. I mean, once that ball touched your hands, you need to catch it. And on fourth down and eight, the Gamecocks are going to go from the 30. Play clock. Under 10 seconds. Pinkins gets it. Backs up to the 40. Looks near sideline. Passes broken up. Broken up on the play by 27. Patrick Lamy and that Lafayette secondary, which was supposed to be the vulnerable group on this Raging Cajun defense, so far has played well. And here's the replay, and I think you'll see that Dondrell Pinkins threw this ball behind his intended receiver. Yeah, he, he really did. You know, when you when you stand back in that pocket, you really got to step up and deliver that ball. So he did throw it a little bit behind him. That pass intended for Chris Clark, sophomore at a Lexington High, who caught three passes a year ago was a quarterback in high school so the Gamecocks will go back on defense Lafayette first and ten from the 30-yard line Babb backing up a little draw play and a pretty good hole as he is necktied at the 39-yard line that was smothers on the carry that's a heck of a tackle by Jeremiah Garrison it would have been a lot worse on that, on that uh, yardage but Good play by Garrison, but too much on the running game. I, you know, I brag about this four-man front, but I tell you what, this is a big hole to get outside of these guys. I, I, I bragged on them a little while, but it looked like the Raging Cajuns started to make some holes up front. you got to have tremendously strong fingers to put your hand inside a guy's uniform like that and just drag him from behind. Nice stop by Garrison, but a big gain, nine yards. They'll try it on the ground again across the 40. We'll see where they mark it forward progress will make it close. It'll be close, but I think. Marcus Lawrence on the stop. Credit Marcus Lawrence with the tackle. 6'3, 236 pound junior college transfer. Originally out of Aiken, South Carolina, Silver Bluff High School, a first team junior college all American. Talk about a half yard to go. Maybe this is going to be the quarterback speak I've been talking about. <laughs> So third down and short. Lafayette one of six on third down. Carolina has done the job in that situation so far tonight. And Lafayette's going to think about it and burn their first timeout. First timeout of this ball game. Seven nothing. Carolina leads it. A little over nine minutes to go in this ball game. 
Fans, you can tune in to Sue SS, CSS every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Press Box. Host Matt Stewart, along with regional sports personalities Rudy Martsky, Ryan Stewart, and Wes Durham debate the hottest topics in the world of sports. And you'll only, only be able to see it on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Hi, we were talking about Ricky Bussell a couple of times uh, earlier in the ball game, and you mentioned uh, the surprise of him going back to Blacksburg after one year. I believe that that was family considerations more than anything else. His family just fell in love with the Blacksburg area, and uh, I think it had more to do with that than anything else, and obviously uh, he helped direct them to a national championship game in the late 1990s. I think a lot of people thought he might have stayed there a, a little bit longer. He was so happy there, and they were happy with him. But, you know, once a head coach, always a head coach. I think it's very hard to, to be a head coach and then not want to get back. Bustle even uh, did a little USFL back with the old Arizona Wranglers back in 1983. So he's been coaching for a long time in a lot of different places. Third down and one. Staggered eye for the Raging Cajuns. Fab. Toss left side inside the 40. And it's going to be close. I think he got it. I think he did too, George. Ted Crawford took the inside track on that blitz from the corner. And he got, unfortunately, set Ted up for a block from the back there. And he it was taken completely out of the play here. <laughs> yeah, they, what he did was when he when he hit up in that inside, he got too far inside, and yes, then the did. running back just went right around. Him. You got to remember, you got support on the inside, but if you are the outside guy and you take the inside track, then that guy's going to just uh, block you out of the play. Lawrence and Shropshire on the stop, but a little bit too late. First down and ten from the 42. Smothers now seven carries for 29 yards. Bab this time looking to throw under hot pursuit, completes the pass. Nice job to throw it out there to 18. Kemi Lewis, the third time's a charm. Trying to hit Kemi a couple of times previous, but unable to do it. But that time he hits the 6'2", 180-pound junior. And you're right, a good job by Jerry Babb getting positive yardage out of what looked like a negative situation there. Tell you what, Jerry Babb, you know there's got to be something about this kid that they like. Everybody thought the senior, the incumbent, was going to come back and start for this team this year. Babb was a scout teamer all last year. Never got on the field, redshirted. But in the fall, he won the job. Flat out took it away. Second down, seven yards to go. Another draw play up the middle for a modest gain. Raging Cajuns so far a good mix of run and pass. They are, and more than anything else, they are eating up the clock in this football game. And that takes away from potential points for the Gamecocks, obviously. So give them credit. They're prepared. Yeah, they, they're definitely keeping our defense on the field a long time. And, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, we, got to, we got to get the football back. There's Jerry Babb, 5 out of 10, 47 yards, and some heady plays on other plays in this ballgame. So he's played well. Yeah, he took some hits, too, so he's a good football player. Yet another third down for the Raging Cajuns. We've seen a lot of them. Carolina bringing the blitz back, rolling out left, throwing. Got a man and almost intercepted, broken up. A nice play by number 16, Jamesha Jackson. First time we've called his name tonight. 6-1 junior out of Sumter, South Carolina. And once again, the Gamecock pass rush affected this throw. If you, as you'll look at the replay here, as soon as he let it go, he was bumped. And you can see that wounded duck going out there to Jamesha Jackson. Well, I'll tell you what, I wish they would have saw that bump right there and, and got the interception and going back the other way. That one should have been caught, George. <laughs> That's right. But what a good defensive play, though. So Autry will punt it away from the 49 of Lafayette. Punt bounces inside the 20, will roll dead at about the 16-yard line where Carolina will take over first and 10. Still 7-0, Gamecocks with the lead. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports.
Yes. 6.45 to go. Welcome back, everybody. Lafayette back on defense. Carolina trying to get a drive going. They've had one that's been able to reach the end zone as Terman gets another carry, but not a whole lot on the ground there. Time of possession. This might be the stat of the game thus far. Lafayette leading the way. Over 14 minutes they've had the football to Carolina's 8 minutes and 56 seconds. So Ricky Bustle doing what Lafayette needs to do, control the clock in this game. And you know, the Raging Cajuns are doing a better job on first down than South Carolina. That helps extend drives when you only got second and short, third and short. Here's South Carolina faced with a, about eight and a half yards to go for a first down on second down. Pickens under center, the handoff up the middle, big hole for Terman. Terman hit low in the 25 and drug back. Forward progress will mark it out to the 25-yard line, a gain of about nine. And a nice stick by the secondary. That's Wendell Williams, number three, a junior out of Baton Rouge. I tell you what, when you get a running back that can hit it up in there hard like that, that's my type of running back. And that's what that's what Duncan and uh, Kenny Irons and the rest of the running backs have been doing tonight. Third down and one. We've had a multitude of third downs here in this first half for both teams. Carolina one out of five on third down. Staggered eye formation. Terman is the fullback. Pinkins, toss sweep right side. And short, drug down is number four, Corey Boyd, the freshman out of Orange, New Jersey. And that play snuffed out again. And the coaches are not going to like this from Corey Boyd because he needs a half a yard for a first down. He just needs to lower his head right there. He waited too long, got blasted. He I tell you, I, that's true too, but I guarantee you that play was designed to go outside. They just missed their blocks. It is just, it's just plain and simple that. He, the outside guy missed his block. He should have gotten the limited yardage he was going to get. He would have had a first down, but he yeah, too late to lower his head. So fourth down, Carolina forced to punt it away. High kick fielded by the 39-yard line. Fair caught. Lafayette will take over from their own 39-yard line. 7-0 Gamecocks. Tune in tomorrow night for another great college football game. Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners take on the Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Well, one thing about it there, guys, I tell you what, I think we're getting out played right now. I, I really do. They had the ball on offense longer than we have. We haven't we haven't got anything going since we had that turnover on them. These guys come to play football, and I just hope our guys realize that. Well, a lot has been made of Lafayette's career record against the Southeastern Conference, 0 for 45, and you know that's a streak that they desperately want to stop. Run around left side for a few. Looks like Smothers again. Travis Smothers. The junior actually getting the majority of the carries thus far tonight. That is his eighth carry of the evening. And there again, good first down yardage for the Raging Cajuns with the running game. So it's about five and a half yards from a first down. Good job on first down for the Cajuns. And that clock just continues to wind down. Under four minutes to go in the first half. We've seen just seven points. In this ball game, Jerry Babb leading the team to the line of scrimmage. Another run, another give to Travis Smothers. Smothers before that carry, eight rushes for 34 yards. So that's over four yards a clip. He's getting it done with a raging Cajuns. Linebacker Rod Thomas in the game now made the tackle. Well, I tell you what, South Carolina need to make some kind of stand. I can tell you that right now. They need to, to get back where they was in the first quarter and start playing some football. Third down, three yards to go. Babb stumbles out of the drop back, but still completes the pass. A little slant pattern caught at the 45-yard line That's Eric by number Bartell, his second catch of the day. 22, Eric Bartell. 
Well, I'll tell you what, give, give the quarterback credit. Even though he took a good lick, he delivered a he delivered a strike. And that, when you when you stand up in there like that and still can throw the football, that's a sign of a good quarterback. Bartell is actually the son of assistant head coach Gary Bartell. One of the wide receivers for the Ragin' Cajuns in his senior year. First down and 10 from the 45 of Carolina. Give us to the up back. Gain of about three yards, and that smothers again. The primary tackle again by Rod Thomas, and they're getting some playing time at linebacker. I'll tell you something else, guys, that Lafayette has been able to do is take this crowd out of the game a little bit. I said a whole lot, not just a little bit. I mean, we usually hear this Gamecock hollering, but we ain't got very much to holler about. I don't think the locker room's going to be a happy place at halftime, guys. I don't think so either. I think uh, take a look at the crowd. That's the fourth largest opening day crowd ever, over 82,000. The number one, in case you were wondering, last year against New Mexico State, over 83,000. Yeah. And Carolina on the turnover. It's DeAndre Island. South Carolina getting the big play on defense, which they've so desperately needed on a couple of these drives, and DeAndre Island comes up with it. You know, yeah. you know what? I, and I and I and I'm just like just like y'all. We were waiting for something to happen, just like all the fans, just like the fans were waiting for something to happen. And anytime you get the quarterback just throwing it and throwing it, something good has gotta happen. You gotta think something good gonna happen for your team anyway. And this play right here could have came at a better time. DeAndre Island, who did not make the starting rotation this year. Bit of a surprise, beaten out by Ted Crawford, but a guy who you'll see a lot of this in his senior year. Back to pass, caught over the middle by Goodman again, and Mikhail Goodman with the game of his life for South Carolina. Another reception, make it four grabs now for Goodman. How about Mikhail Goodman being the go-to guy here in the first half for Dondrell Pinkins. You mentioned DeAndre Island just a while ago. He does have some good press clippings. Two interceptions in an Outback Bowl win for the Gamecocks. So he's uh, he's had some good experience to get some great competition. Gamecocks need to capitalize. But Holding. We're going to have a penalty. Against the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Well, that hurts. Yeah, that really does. You know, that just goes to show, you know, when you make good plays like that, now you got to, you got to be sure that you don't have any holding or any things like that because that's what tears the team back down again. And that's only the fourth penalty of this half, the third on South Carolina, so a rather mistake-free ball game from that standpoint thus far. So first down and 20 for Carolina. Backing up Pickens, heavy pursuit. Tosses it off to Irons. He's got a couple of blockers downfield but cannot avoid the initial tackler. And the Gamecocks still have a long way to go to reach the first down marker. I play was still set up pretty good right there. I mean, I, it didn't work out for the best, but it was a, it was a good play, though. A minute to go in the first half of play. It's South Carolina 7 and Lafayette nothing. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. And welcome back, Carolina. Enjoying a little bit of a breather here as they call timeout. Their first, a minute to go. Gamecocks leading at seven and nothing as you take a look at beautiful Williams Price Stadium, which sometimes looks even a tad nicer during the night. And if you're the fans trying to battle the, the weather this time of year, it feels nicer at night. But fans would feel even better, guys, if Carolina would get something going, get another score before the half. And the one thing about it is when you get those turnovers, you've got to cash in on them. And I keep saying that over and over again. But this is what football's all made of. If you, got, if you capitalize on that mistake, that other team's going to be defeated a little bit. Case in point, Georgia Bulldogs over Clemson this afternoon. Three turnovers to none. Pickens going to go to the air again, and the pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Looked like big old 
99, George Benson, 6'3", 290, a junior out of Oakland, California, got the hand up and deflected the pass. You know, we talk about how our defensive linemen are knocking balls down. These guys over here on the other side are knocking the ball down, too. So give Ricky Bustle a lot of credit, guys. He, he came in with a good football team. I think Dondrell Pinkins needs to do a little better job of looking one way and throwing the other. Seems to be telegraphing his throws right now. Carolina one out of six on third down. Here's another one. Third down and 13. Pinkins looking for Goodman again. Caught for a first down at about the 33-yard line. How about Mikhail Goodman coming to life here in the season opener? Oh, well, I tell you what, uh, I really like this. You know why? Because last year we really didn't have too many people to go to go to. He, what a perfect pass. And this guy right here, he, Goodman, he can catch the ball, and he's looking good right now. Well, he's surely finding the seams in that Cajun defense. Gamecock's got to cash in. 40 seconds left. Pickens, quick pass over the middle, in and out of the hands of Taki Muhammad. Uh, Soon like to be a little alligator arms there a little bit, but uh, he, he, he dropped it, so all's good so far. And picking <laughs> six out of 16, but you're right, George. He has not had a great deal of help from his receivers other than Mikhail Goodman, and, of course, going back to the first quarter, the touchdown grab by Troy Williamson, second down and 10 from the Lafayette 32 yard line. 35 ticks to go. Pinkins, three men going deep. He goes to the short man, Williamson, at the 25 near the 21 yard line. He stays in bounds, and they will likely burn a timeout here. And they do. And a good job there of, uh, you'll see him fight off the defender just long enough to get the first down. He catches it about eight yards, and then you watch him here. Defenders got him, but he just got that forward momentum into the first down marker there. Take that back. They will use the first down as a clock stoppage. Save the timeouts. They've got two left. Run another play here. Pickens over the middle. Incomplete off the hands of number 39, Brian Brownlee, the backup tight end. Probably the guy you would least expect to get his number called for that pass play. Obviously, Lafayette didn't expect it, but you got to catch the ball. Well, Brian Brownlee, absolutely lonesome. Dondrell Pinkins, a little bit overthrown there. You got to you got to lay out and catch that ball, but at the same time, it's tough for a stocky guy like Brownlee, but he should have made the catch. Well, yeah, I got I got to agree with that last part you just said. You got to make the catch, and uh, even though he might have put a little bit more on it, but uh, those kind of plays right there, you, you look forward to. Them. For a gift for the Cajuns there because that was a blown assignment in the secondary. Brian Brownlee, redshirt junior out of Abbeville, a former linebacker. And that was the play of his life right there. He's not going to get too many. Last year, Hart Turner led the way with all tight ends, four receptions. And that's about what we average a year, right, guys? About four grabs a year from the tight ends. No question about it. And any time that tight end get a chance to catch the ball, he better get it because if he don't catch it, he might not see it in a long time after that. We'll give the Gamecock coaches credit. They called the perfect play in the perfect situation, but the players just did not quite execute like they needed to. But, uh, boy, they saw something, a delayed blocking assignment there by Brownlee, threw the defense completely off, fooled the defense, but the Gamecocks didn't execute. Well, Lafayette does Carolina a bit of a favor here. They call timeout using their second. So the time situation, as you see, 15 seconds left. Gamecocks have two timeouts left. So really, time to get off a few plays here. Time shouldn't be as big a factor as perhaps the down and distance. Second down and 10 from the 21. Pickens again on a rollout. Finds his man, Goodman, who wisely gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Just short of a first down. Inside the 15 at around the 12-yard line. I tell you what, we just got time enough for, for, um, for one more play. This is a good play call, you know, and then he can get out of bounds. Like, that's smart. That's smart football player right there to do that. Boy, his knee almost got down too soon. <laughs> no, it, it really did. Five grabs for... Mikhail Goodman, 56 yards. And right now, he, along with Pinkins, getting into a groove. 
Third down, one yard to go. Four wide. Pinkins pumps right, throws left into the corner of the end zone and incomplete once again intended for Goodman, but the coverage was there. And it's going to be field goal time, guys. I tell you what, to get anything out of that disjunction of the game will still be good, but you know, like I said at the very beginning, when you get those turnovers, you've got to get points. Well, Mikhail Goodman came in with 10 career receptions. He's got five here tonight. The field goal is going to be attempted by Josh Brown, the sophomore. We're looking at 29 yards here. Right now, every Gamecock fan in the building holding their breath. Snap is good, kick is up, and it's blocked. And picked up by Lafayette, and there's a lot of territory all the way down the sideline. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. Louisiana Lafayette, 85 yards on the score, and we are an extra point away from being tied. Number 27, Patrick Lamey picks it up and goes the distance. I tell you what, that is the most disappointing play that I've seen tonight, other than not scoring, other than not scoring on some of those downs. But what a great block. The, the kid got out there and laid out, and they picked it up, and there was nobody, nobody to get it. Nobody. Extra point good. And that's the way the half is going to end. Seven to seven, our score. Seven block kicks last season by the Cajuns. And the first one of this year, something that Ricky Bustle. Well, I tell you what, that's a momentum buster right there. And, that, and I, hope, I hope our guys know that these guys come to play football now. Just by them getting that right there, that, that uh, block kick right there and running it all the way back, I'm telling you, it's a momentum mover. And I hope our guys come out and play well. That was Michael Adams who blocked the kick. And really, Brown had no chance. And you take a look at Lou Holtz, he can't believe it. He is absolutely disgusted. A special teams play for the Rage and Cajuns ends the half. And a surprising score that not too many people would believe if they just saw it on a sports sticker, 7-7 seven to seven at the half. Much more to come. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports.
And welcome back, Williams Bryce Stadium, a sellout crowd, one of the largest for an opening game in the history of Carolina football. And most of the 82,000 plus stunned at what they've seen in the first 30 minutes. A 7 7 tie as the Gamecocks only able to muster 127 yards of offense. Defense doing its job, but the special teams, a tough way to end the half, a blocked field goal attempt returned 85 yards the final play of the half to make it 7-7 and I guess George I'll start off with you maybe the toughest question of all what's going on out there I tell you what I at the beginning of the game we had a couple of turnovers that, that I thought helped us out we didn't get anything out of it when you do when you do like that you let the team in the game they, those guys on the other side still thinking they can play with us so we got to get the ball and we got to go down and score when we get a chance to get those mistakes on them. Tommy Moody, not much going right for Carolina in terms of putting points on the board. Some nice receptions here and there, but the running game, we really thought that Carolina would be able to run the football better against this raging Cajun defense. Thus far, that has not been the case. Well, you read my mind, Mike. Biggest disappointment, biggest negative surprise, if you will, for the Carolina in this half. I really thought, really banked on a solid running game that was going to control the clock, put points on the board. The Cajuns have stuffed the running game, and what that has uh, consequently done is put Dondrell Pinkins in tough third-down situations. The Gamecocks haven't done all that well. Only seven points in the first half, and that came off a short drive after a turnover. 14 carries for 44 yards, uh, to be exact. The uh, final numbers at the half for the Gamecock running backs. George, what do they need to do different to get that ground game going? Well, I, you know what? I, I, I like to see them start to run the ball a little bit more better, a little bit better. But you know what, though, if you really look at it, those, those raising cages now, they are in this game now. And I knew after that kickoff right there, at that uh, block field goal, those guys are gonna come out ready to play. And if they can get anything established on the, on the, on the ground game and with that passing game, I think South Carolina gonna be in trouble. This might be an upset. Tommy, very important the first drive or two in the third quarter for Carolina to get something going and kind of establish who is the better team here. Well, that's right. I think the, the short passes, I've noticed the coverage is soft on the corners by the Raging Cajuns. You know, maybe you want to start off with a seven or eight yard completion, then get your running game going. They have played soft on the corners. They haven't jammed the receivers like many opponents did the last half of last season. And as far as uh, Ricky Bustle and the Cajuns, I'm sure in the locker room right now, he's saying, guys, keep doing what you're doing. You're taking the crowd out of the game. Uh, you're playing sound fundamentally on offense and defense. You're stuffing their running game. And of course, a great special teams play, which they're noted for. Keep doing what you're doing, and we may be okay in this thing. And one bright spot to, to look to last year in the opener, Carolina only led New Mexico State by three at the half, 13 to 10. And of course, uh, uh, pretty much won that game handily after that. So still plenty of football to be played. Once again, Mike Morgan, along with Tommy Moody, the Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers, back for another year. So glad to be with you here at williams Bryce Stadium. A, a sold out crowd, a, a beautiful night after a rather hot afternoon, as you cut, might imagine here in Columbia, South Carolina. And Gamecock fans very excited about this upcoming season. A proper diet and exercise routine is important not only for athletes, but for everyone. USC is educating people about diet and exercise right. and combating obesity in South Carolina with research and outreach programs. Indy Jones has the story of one such program. Approximately 15% of children between the ages 6 and 19 are overweight. That's three times as many as in 1980, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. USC's Dr. Russ Pate, who studies physical activity in children and teens, says lack of exercise is a problem. The evidence would suggest that kids are not getting as much activity as they need, uh, though the long-term tracking studies don't exist to prove it. It's uh, very, very likely that the current generation of kids is the least active ever. USC is tackling the issue through research, like Dr. Pate's, and special programs, one such program, Good Bodies, was created to combat the increasing rate of obesity in children in South Carolina. Each session, we, we meet them twice a week for 45 minutes per session, and it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, a clinician and a child. And we do a physical activity principle and a nutrition principle each of those times. Good Bodies is all about good health, and for good reason. There's an 80% chance that adolescents who are obese will become obese adults and we know that the the um, 
the beginning of good health and the prevention of disease begins early in life. With the help of Coach Brian Michno, fourth grader Quentin Nissen will use the lessons in the program to help him learn about proper nutrition and the importance of physical activity. The most important lesson, I think, is just moderation of food. You know, you don't have to totally cut out what you like to eat. You know, I, I don't. I'm never going to do that. So. And also physical activity. I mean, that can, that's the number one problem that, you know, we're just not active enough. And so how important, then, is exercise to help children develop good bodies? Children who are in this program do not continue to gain weight, so they maintain the weight, and because they're young and they're still growing and developing, they're getting taller than maybe they are losing in, in some, some ways. My mom says I, she thinks I'm getting skinnier a little. It's either that or I'm getting taller. At the University of South Carolina, I'm Indy Jones. If you're in restaurant and tourism management might be able to help you out. Indy Jones has the story. Tuesday through Friday during the spring and fall semesters, the students and faculty of the University of South Carolina School of Hotel, Restaurant and Tourism Management are ready to serve you. Lunch. We do a probably the largest gourmet buffet on a daily basis in Columbia. We have several hot items each day as well as a uh, chill selection as you can see homemade breads from our bakery. Today we have tricolor tortellini primavera. We have chicken cacciatore. We have clam chowder, uh, glazed ham, prime ribs of beef. Chef Jules Purnell oversees the kitchen at McCutcheon House while the students work out front, learning how to run a restaurant. You actually get a hands-on uh, experience and a chance to, to really put what you've learned throughout your years of school to work. A lot of the students have restaurant experience. Um, and some want to be in the management end, some want to actually be in the back, so uh, it gives them a chance to, to work all the different areas of, of what makes a restaurant run. The best part for customers and students is definitely the buffet. You get to see all the people and see how they react to all the food. Most of them are like, oh my gosh, this looks so great. And they love the desserts and stuff. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. At the University of South Carolina, I'm Indy Jones. Welcome back to Williams Bryce Stadium. This is Tommy Moody uh, along with Mike Morgan and Jordan Rogers. And a score on your screen that will send shockwaves around the country for a halftime score. It is 7 7. If you're just tuning in, uh, uh, you're, you're not seeing anything wrong there. It is 7-7. The Cajuns blocked a field goal on the last play of the first half. 7-7 ball game, and it has not been a fluke. The Ragin' Cajuns have uh, gained more yards in South Carolina, and they have controlled the clock. The Gamecock running game has just not been there. They have not established a, a ground game that would open up the throwing game, which is a big, big surprise to me, Mike. Well, it certainly is, and as we take a look at uh, some of the halftime statistics, uh, I think surprises all around, really, rushing the football. Carolina actually netting uh, 31 yards in the first quarter, and they would finish at the half with not much better, 44, 14 carries for 44 yards. You know, through the air, I think we all had our doubts about just how well Carolina would throw the football in the first game, 83 yards, that not overly surprising. Uh, Pinkins... The quarterback in the first half, 8 of 20, no interceptions. The one touchdown pass, of course, early on in the first quarter to Troy Williamson. And uh, those are just some of the stats. We'll get to the rest of them later on, but some of the key numbers in this first half, Tommy. And it's just one of those things, you know, it's been said, I've had a chance to watch a lot of the games early on today, and it's been said so many times, and rightly so, there is no preseason in college football. You, you, you come out there and you just don't know what to expect. Carolina really hasn't made a whole lot of 
mistakes in terms of, of, of turnovers and big play mistakes, other than, of course, the block field goal. But they just seem like a, a team that's not completely in sync right now. And, you know, let's not go this whole halftime without giving Lafayette some credit. Obviously, they came here to play. Ricky Bustle is in his second year now with the Raging Cajun program. And we all know how good a coach he is. We all know they didn't come here, you know, just for a paycheck. They're giving it their best, and they played a good half. Well, I was impressed from the get-go because their secondary, uh, we talked about timing over and over again on some of their coverage, but they – they were right there for Carolina's uh, pass attempts early in the game. And, you know, Gamecocks break one or two of those off. We may have a different story here. But the secondary, I think, set the tone for the Raging Cajuns, gave them confidence. And, you know, there again, I hate to hark back on it, but back to the running game. But now let's listen in to the Sears Cup uh, standings on the field. Gamecocks finished uh, in the top 20 for the second straight year and sent 16 programs to the NCAA tournament. Let's listen in. Tracy Richardson. The women's golf team capped another successful year with their eighth appearance in the NCAA tournament under coach Christy Coggins. They finished with a final ranking of 17th in the nation. Two-time SEC champion Christy McPherson was selected All-American and the SEC Player of the Year. And for the second consecutive year, coach Ray Tanner and his baseball squad advanced to the College World Series and finished sixth in the nation. In the last four seasons, the Gamecocks have won four consecutive NCAA regionals, two SEC championships, four SEC Eastern Division titles, and have the second winningest record in college baseball. Landon Powell was selected first team SEC. Brian Busher selected first team SEC and All-American. David Marchbanks was all SEC, All-American, and the SEC Pitcher of the Year. The Gamecock track and field program continued its outstanding success under the leadership of Coach Curtis Fry. The men's track team finished fifth in the NCAA indoors. Kenneth Ferguson, Jonathan Fortenberry, Odakili Lakoti, and Otis Harris won SEC indoor and outdoor titles. All-American honors went to Tony Allman, Kenneth Ferguson, Jonathan Fortenberry, Otis Harris, Odakili Lakoti, Fred Townsend, and Corey Taylor. The women's track team finished second in the NCAA Indoor Championship and fourth at the Outdoor Championships, becoming one of only three schools in the nation with eight consecutive top ten finishes. SEC titles were won by Mickey Barber, Lashinda Demas, Tiffany Ross, Demetra Washington, and Erica Whipple. Aileen Bailey was named the SEC's Female Athlete of the Year in track and field, and Erica Whipple won the SEC Commissioner's Trophy. Tiffany Ross won four NCAA East Regional titles. Eleven individuals were honored as All-Americans. Aileen Bailey, Nikki Barber, Lashinda Demas, Chelsea Hammond, Alexis Joyce, Tiffany Ross, Shevon Stoddard, Tawana Watkins, Demetria Washington, Eric Whipple and Antoinette Wills. As we congratulate and thank all of these coaches and student athletes for making this another banner year for USC athletics, we also look forward to the future with great anticipation. Now, everyone, give one more rousing ovation for your outstanding Sears Cups teams of 2002 and 2003. And welcome back, everybody. Halftime festivities here at williams Bryce Stadium as we get set to look at some highlights. This ball game tied at seven apiece. So as you might imagine, not a whole lot of highlights. Gamecocks got things going early on. Pinkins 
to Troy Williamson, the sophomore, on an inside screen, 13-yard scamper into the end zone, and the Gamecocks looked like they were off and running, 7-0. Then Carolina picking up a key defensive play. DeAndre Island with the interception to set up the Gamecocks in good field position. At that point, things looked like Carolina was, well, frankly, going to run away with this thing, but Lafayette just Gritty and gutty, both offensively and defensively, and the play of the half right here. Field goal attempt blocked off the corner, picked up by Lafayette at the 15, and an 85-yard run all the way to the end zone. The final play of the half, and that is where we stand now. 7-7, a tie ball game here at williams Bryce. All right, let's give some first-half stats, uh, and they're going to tell the tale. It's Fairly even in the stats and fairly even on the scoreboard, as 7 7 tie would indicate. Rushing yards, South Carolina 44, but Lafayette has 76. Uh, yards uh, passing, 83 for the Gamecocks, 56 for the Cajuns. Turnover is the big stat. Gosh, if you, if you guys had told me this before the game, I'd say South Carolina's up by 21 points, 24 points. We are in a tie game, and the Gamecocks are plus three in turnovers. Time of possession, no surprise there due to the running game. Again, 1708 to 1252 in favor of the Cajuns. Uh, and I tell you what, had they not had we not had all those three of those turnovers, Lafayette will be running away with this thing by now. And I'm just glad that the defense will be able to play pretty good. And uh, hopefully they're gonna come back out with another attitude, and that's what we need in this game for them to win this football game. Again, seven to seven as our score at the half as we get set. To take a break, we come back. Second half action between the Gamecocks and the Rage and Cajuns. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. We did williams Bryce Stadium, where our score is seven apiece. Mike Morgan along with Tommy Moody and George Rogers getting you set for second half action. 82,000 plus here in Columbia to see this ball game and hoping for better things out of the second half than the first as Carolina held to a 7-7 tie in the first half. The Raging Cajuns will get the football first as Joey Bowers will kick it off the junior out of Somerville, South Carolina. Lafayette with two deep backs. The official says go, and the second half is up and running. Bowers all the way halfway back into the end zone and a wise move by the Lafayette return man. That's 81. Jarvis McCurchin and Lafayette will take over first down and 10 from the 20 yard line. As you see Coach Bussell, he's got to be very pleased guys with what his team was able to do in the first half and when you when you let a sleeping dog kind of just keep in there and wake him up now all of a sudden you got a team playing with confidence in the second half. Well I'll bet you he reminded them of that game at Arkansas last year when they were down 24 17 with two minutes to go and threw an interception. He wants them to nail it down tonight. Let's see how the Gamecocks adjusted at halftime. Jerry Babb, impressive in the first half, under center here in the second. Play action pass, rolls out right, looking for stamps downfield, and he's got them. Tiptoe catch right inside the Carolina sideline, and there you see number two, Fred Stamps, their go-to guy, and he comes through with another first down grab. 
And what a job by Fred Stamps. He's as good as advertised, guys. He really got, as you said, Mike, got his tiptoes down. Just, just did get him in for the position. Good call by the official. Ball at the 36 now. First down and 10. Once again, out of the eye. Carolina rushing five and stuffing the run. That's number 46 for the Gamecocks, Marcus Lawrence. And what a game he has had, gentlemen. Marcus had a Silver Bluff High School. Yeah, and I told you about that four down lineman. I tell you what, they might be throwing the ball on us a little bit, but I tell you what, those, those down linemen are playing real hard. If you try to run that ball down the line of scrimmage, you're not going to get very far. Great play. Carolina playing this game thus far without Lance Lowry, but Marcus Lawrence has really made a fine debut in his first game in a Gamecock uniform. Second down and 15 now for the Ragin' Cajuns. And a whistle and a penalty flag. We didn't have many of those in the first half, just four penalties in the entire first half. I don't like to lay a game on that one. Prior to the snap, delay of game against the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. So that'll set up second down and a cheap cab ride. 20 yards to go. <laughs> well, we talked about it in the first half the Reagan Cajuns having more success on first down than the game talks. So let's see what happens now. Negative five yards on the first carry, and then five more from the penalty. Second and 20 is a lot different from second and four or five. You take a look at the numbers on Babs, seven of 14, 72 yards, 50% on the percentage. And for a red shirt freshman, pretty good leadership out there. Draw play and a big hole left side all the way out to the 45 yard line. And once again, that is Mr. Smothers on the carry. Travis Smothers, who led the way in rushing in the first half. What a great play call, though. I mean, I thought the quarterback was dropping back to pass it, and all of a sudden he he gives it to the, to, to the tailback. What a great play. Hancock's just being out executed. So another key third down, third down and one. Ball spotted just inside the 45 yard line. You take a look there. The man who's getting it done for Lafayette Smothers. Babb tosses it to Smothers, left side wrapped up and tackled well short of a first down. That's Kevin Caldwell. Kevin Caldwell, a surprise starter and a guy, Tommy Moody, you know quite a bit about. That's right, Kevin Caldwell, the walk-on from Cornelius, North Carolina. I played baseball with Kevin's, with Kevin's dad, Buddy. And I wanted to say a big hello from Kevin and Buddy and Judy to the grandparents of Kevin Caldwell watching tonight up in Cornelius, North Carolina. Boy, what a dream for a walk-on and a big, big play in this game for number 40. I ain't no doubt about it. We needed it. And so a big stop for the Carolina defense forcing the punt and set back to return it and fielding it inside the 10. That's 32. Dante Robinson at the 30, at the 35, but a penalty flag down all the way back at the 15, and I think, fellas, they're going to take this one back. Clipper. Hitting in the back. We've seen Williamson. We've seen Summers on a return. We've seen Robinson now on a return. And a good return, but the penalty flag, as it almost always is on a return of any kind against the return. the return team. Illegal block in the back against the return team. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Watch Isaac Stackhouse, yep. number 41, left side of your screen right there. Immediately a little contact in the back there. Wasn't much, but it probably affected the play. They got to throw the flag there. Yeah, you got to throw the flag, and you know what? A good play call. Your referee is trying to call the game, but you know what? If you're South Carolina, you got to make your own breaks. So, you know, if you, if to win this game. So, here, 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 when we get a chance to see what our offense is going to do. Are they going to get a ball back or are they going to go down and score some points? Well, Carolina needs 93 yards to get in the end zone. They haven't been able to really put together a, a long drive thus far in this ball game. Even the touchdown early on in the first quarter didn't have to travel very far down the field. So 
This will be an opportunity to get that first long drive and something they're certainly going to have to do pretty soon because let's face it, folks, the, the road only gets tougher next week against Virginia. Mm. And then after that, traveling to Athens against Georgia. And anybody that saw what Georgia did to Clemson earlier today knows that is going to be one stiff challenge over there at Sanford Stadium. Well, I can tell you right now, Lou Holtz ain't liking this the way our, our team is playing right now. But I expect our players going to get better before the end of the game. First down and 10 for Carolina. Shotgun formation. Pinkins. Give up the middle and wrapped up with not a whole lot of room to go is Kenny Irons. Kenny Irons just has not been able to get going here so far today. That's his fifth carry for about five yards so far tonight. Kenny Irons, his specialty is hitting a hole in a hurry. The problem has been the lack of holes tonight. And there again, the Raging Cajuns jamming up the middle. Yeah, Kenny Irons got to look a little bit more, uh, cutting that thing back a little bit. and. Uh, Instead of uh, running right at the hole all the time, you know, uh, looked like he had a little room on the left side over there. Second down, eight yards to go. And immediately throws it near sideline and caught by Williamson. And that should be enough. It is for a first down beyond, beyond the 25 yard line. And this is a guy we'd like to see a little bit more of, fellas, Troy Williamson. Well, I tell you what, Troy, he's done a good job of catching the football for us. But I'm telling you, on this drive right here, South Carolina got to show these guys that look, we we got an offense too, and we got to we got to show them that we can go on all the way down the field and score uh, score some points. Number four, Stanley Smith, for the Raging Cajuns, did a great job of fighting through a block and making Dondrell throw it in a hurry, but a good throw instead. Just the third grab for Troy Williamson there. Go to receiver this year. Pinkins, quarterback keeper, right side. Pinkins stretches out to the 30. And he'll set up second down and about seven to eight yards to go. If you joined us late, Carolina struck the scoreboard first in the first quarter. And Lafayette led by. Ricky Bustle, but there's their defensive coordinator, Brent Pry, and what a job his unit has done thus far holding that Gamecock offense to just those seven points. That's, you're certainly right about that. Give that whole coaching staff a lot of credit. Pickens out of the gun. Quick throw, far sideline and incomplete. Officials saying that ball was, was tapped, so no chance for interference. You can hit anybody early as long as that ball is deflected early and that's exactly what happened on that play. Well one thing about it is Pickens he he's trying to step in that pocket and throw it but I tell you what those defensive linemen just like ours are getting those hands up and um, deflecting that ball and now uh, you know too many of those deflections cause interceptions now. N number 55 Darace James defensive end out of Patterson Louisiana makes that great play. So it sets up a third down and eight. Pinkins rolling out left. He's got Hart Turner over the middle. Instead goes near sideline. And the pass is caught by Goodman once again. And it will be enough for a first down. So Mikhail Goodman has quickly become Pinkins' new favorite target here tonight. You talk about a guy who's paid his dues now. He, he's played more positions than, than there almost than there are on the field. But of course he played quarterback as a freshman when the Gamecocks went through six quarterbacks in 1999 and good to see him having a good night. Seems like Goodman's been in the program roughly 17 years. I mean <laughs> he's he's been around a while. <laughs> Finally in his senior year. First down and 10. Pinkins on the play action. There's the pass to the tight end Turner. Turner upended over the 50 yard line and in Ragin Cajun territory. Hart Turner one of the captains of this team, 6'5", 247-pound senior out of Spartanburg. Well, that's one thing about it now. We, 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 I'm glad to see a tight end catch the football because last year, uh, we didn't have very many of these right here. And this guy right here, he really wants the football, too. When you get a big tight end like that, all he can do is run straight ahead, that north and south thing. And good that's soft what it's touching, all about. Good soft touch in that situation by Pinkins. That is the sixth career catch for Turner caught four a year ago. One previous to that. He'd like to get some more. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. 
Here's Demetrius Summers, spin move and scampers up the middle for a good gain on the ground. Demetrius Summers, a highly touted freshman and the fans screaming meat. Something we'll hear for the next four years. I tell you what, this guy right here in high school, 9,000 yards, 127 touchdowns. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see him get loose either. <laughs> you take a look now at Skip Holtz on the sideline. So much has been made about this year. It skips offense to run completely. And right now he's trying to get something going here with this drive. So far it's looking good, second down and five. And as soon as I say that, some confusion as the play clock was running down and Carolina forced to burn a timeout. 8.43 to go in the third quarter of play, 7-7 tie. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. <laughs> Welcome back, Mike Morgan, Tommy Moody, George Rogers here with you. College football, Gamecock style on CSS. A tie ball game, seven apiece. Mikael Goodman leading the way receiving-wise, six grabs for 66 yards. This is a guy who started in 99, thrust into a prominent role once starting quarterback Phil Petty went down, threw 65 passes in 99, ran 53 times as a quarterback in 99, and then uh, 2001, of course, uh, did not play, Latin, and now this year, trying to catch the football as he did last year. Caught 10 passes a year ago. Pinkins with the handoff. It's up the middle to Demetrius Summers, who lumbers to the 35-yard line. And that run, George, kind of like what Lou was saying, he doesn't look that fast, but people don't seem to catch up to him very often. And he's got good eyesight. He, know how, he knows where that hole is. When he hits that hole, he turns the ball up, and that's what you got to do. And he's so hard to bring down. A lot of people don't know it. He's hard to bring down, though. In many cases, the defense just kind of gets a ride and hangs on. Demetrius Summers. The numbers are mind-boggling if you look at what he did in high school. Nearby Lexington High. Here is Pinkins keeping it on himself. Inside the 30, ball on the ground. It's a fumble. Lafayette says they have it, and they do. My goodness. Carolina finally mounting a drive, and a costly miscue by the quarterback gives the Ragin' Cajuns the ball back. Well, if you'll see the carry by Dondrell Pinkins here, he's carrying it loosely. He doesn't have it up against his body there, and it just got slapped out. It just takes one quick hand on a situation like that. You can see it come in right there. That's Travis Bass forced the fumble and 31. David Prater on the recovery for Lafayette. And the Raging Cajuns get it right back first and 10 at the 28th. The first turnover for the Gamecocks. And a costly one at that. Babb throws it. Caught in between two Carolina defenders. Looked like he split the safeties there. Jamesha Jackson was back in coverage. What and a, so too was Teddy Crawford. What a bullet throw, though. And watch this quarterback. He throws a bullet. I mean, throws right down there. And I tell you what, I don't understand how the receiver hold on to it, but it was a great catch. Well, the game cops got caught in a blitz there, and uh, not that, that affected how the receiver was able to catch the ball, but they did not get the quarterback. If you're going to blitz, you better make him alter his delivery. That was Billy Sampy on the grab. We talked so much about stamps, but Sampy was second on the team in receptions a year ago with 30. Bobbled snap, and then all Jerry Babb can do is pick it up and lunge forward, try to minimize the loss on the play, but it will be a loss of about a yard, second down and 11.
take a look at Coach Googe, as they call him, Dave De Gugliamo, the offensive line coach for Carolina, who has done a fine job in his stint under head coach Lou Holtz. The offensive line had it working there on the last drive, but the turnover killing it and giving the Ragin' Cajuns the ball back. Second down, 12 yards to go. Bab, little shovel pass, and stopped immediately by the Carolina pursuit. Jeremiah Garrison along with Daryl Shropshire in on the stop. I tell you what, that, def that defensive front, that defensive front is still looking good out there. I, I wish they could get more pass rush, but I know that those guys are getting kind of tired right now. But hey, the game's on the line, so you got to suck it up and let's go. Good stick by Shropshire. Another new guy for Carolina on that defense. Third down and nine. Lafayette four out of ten on third down thus far tonight. Big play. Two wide formation. A back each way for Bad. Gets the snap. Looking over the middle and it is incomplete. Nice job on the coverage there. That is number 28 got a piece of it. DeAndre Island who had the interception in the first half for Carolina. And somebody tipped that ball right at the line of scrimmage. Let's see who got it. Looks like Shropshire, yes. Shropshire has been all over the field tonight. I tell you what, him and Marcus Lawrence so far as good as advertised. Two junior college transfers that are making an impact tonight. Lafayette will punt it away. Another short kick fielded inside the 20 yard line on a fair catch where Carolina will take over first and 10. Dante Robinson grabbing it. 7 7 still our score. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Welcome back, 7-7 our score, 5.58 to go in the third quarter. And there's a man, if you follow college football, Tony Rice, recognize the name. Tony Rice, of course, the former Notre Damer. No doubt about it, what a great football player he was winning that national championship for Lou Holtz. And a great play at Woodruff High School right here in South Carolina. The one thing I like Carolina's doing, they still letting Pickens go in there and play. That, I think that's a great idea because you want to, you don't want to get into coaching uh, changing quarterbacks at right this time, I don't think. If he's the clear-cut starter, yeah, you got to let him get something something going here for the Gamecocks, get his confidence up. Well, another chance for another drive, starting off at the 20. Pinkins, and it looked like he and Williamson not on the same page. I think Pinkins was expecting an out. Williamson went in. You know, speaking of Williamson, I'm ready for one of those Clemson specials. <laughs> Remember the two long passes Troy Williamson got behind Brian Mance for Clemson last year, and. Uh, 11 for 25 you see on your screen there 125 yards for Dondrell Pinkins with a touchdown on that screen pass to Troy Williamson but so far Troy has not been able to get behind the Cajun secondary. Art Turner Mikhail Goodman lined out left. Carolina going in a four wide set this time Pinkins once again out of the gun. Second down 10 yards to go Pinkins going to take it himself up the middle nothing doing. Ankles were wrapped up by number 59, Ross Brubacher, who is their star linebacker. We haven't mentioned his name much tonight, but He's last year, yeah, he entered the season on the Butkus Award list before suffering a season-ending ankle injury. 142 career tackles and eight sacks, and pretty good bloodlines here. His father played for the Chicago Bears. Whole big, lot of mooing out of Carolina fans, too. Big play in this football game, guys. Third down and nine. Seems like every time we look up, Carolina facing a third down. No flag on the play. Pinkins looking over the middle and incomplete, trying to find his tight end, Turner. 
Turner wanted interference. Another close play, but Carolina's going to have to punt it away. That was Antoine Spann again. Another good hit by the defense. Well, I'll tell you, once again, you know, if you're the tight end, you got to catch this football. I mean, we don't hardly throw to the tight ends most of the time anyway, so you might well catch it, but you might not know. You don't know when you're going to get another uh, one thrown at you. Well, that was marginal. That right hand looked like it was around the tight end there before the ball got there. So yet another punt for Josh Brown from the 21 yard line. Look out, heavy pursuit. I'll tell you what, he held that one longer than you'd like. It's going to be fielded at the 33 and drunk down behind the 30 by right play. Ike Crowfoot. Cro Crowfoot, who's wearing 61 tonight, the deep snapper. Got all the way down there and made the tackle. You don't see that often. What a terrific hustle by Ike Crowfoot. And what makes it even more special, it was a heck of a punt by Josh Brown. Good distance there. And Crowfoot got all the way down and made a big play for Carolina. I know. And you th I thought he was going to fair catch it. Well, what a great tackle, though. It's first down and 10 from the 30-yard line, under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Game still tied. Seven apiece. Nothing doing on the handoff. That is number 25 for Lafayette Chester Johnson. It's been kind of quiet tonight. It's been more of the Travis Smothers show for the Ragin' Cajuns. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to give both sides on their defense. Both, both defenses are doing a real good job. And I'm just hoping Carolina can make them make a couple more mistakes. And now uh, into the game for Lafayette. Somewhat surprising, Eric Rakita, the senior, replacing Jerry Babb. Wanna wonder if there's any type of injury. Babb seemed to be doing a pretty good job. So Rakita, 6'2", 237, rolling out right, looking down the field, near sideline, looking for stamps, but he was covered well on the play, threw the ball away. Rakita out of Paducah, Texas, a town I've never heard of. But uh, trying to uh, pull this one out of the fire for the Raging Cajuns, and that's right, fans. We are still tied 7-7, just 4:09 to play in the third quarter. This young man Rakita threw for 625 yards last year, four touchdowns, four interceptions, and everybody thought he had the job coming in. Probably he did too, but Jerry Babb just came out and stole it from him in the fall. Yeah. I tell you what, this this uh, this raging Cajun offense is really showing me something. They they've been hurting their own self. If they can continue to do good, we'll be, they'll be all right. Third down and 12. Carolina rushing five. Rakita going far sideline, deep and incomplete. The coverage was there. A pair of Carolina defenders, including Rod Wilson, on the coverage as well as Teddy Crawford. So a good job by the Carolina secondary, which really has played pretty well here tonight they have done the job for the most part in this game yeah yeah this is a good this is good coverage and I can tell you one thing well just see two of those guys back there instead of one make me know that that's real good coverage so as we continue the punt-a-thon here in Columbia Lafayette's turn now and a wobbler Bounces inside Carolina territory, rolls out of bounds at the 44, but once again, the Gamecocks will have good field position. Yeah, and uh, the thing I like about that is that Carolina's getting all the breaks in this half, but they just ain't capitalized on anything right now. It's wall-to-wall -wall college football on CSS this Saturday at noon, defending national champion Ohio State, hosts San Diego State followed by Michigan State and Rutgers at 3.30. Our final game of the day pits Morgan State and Florida A&M at 7 o'clock. That's all right here on CSS. Just a 28-yard punt there by Autry of Lafayette. Now Pinkins looking over the middle. He's got a man wide open and complete. And that is 49, Hart Turner on the grab. George, I think that's what you were talking about. That's if you can get it in your hands, you got to catch it. And, and for a tight end to do like that, I'm telling you, this is the same play that, was, of course, the guy got his hand in there, but this is the same play they ran a while ago. They just ran it on the other side. And if you can get your hands on it, you can catch it. Gamecocks with the ball now on the 34-yard line of Lafayette. 
Three wide receivers set. Pinkett's play action pass rolling out right looking for Turner he's covered pump fakes now goes to Turner nice grab near the sideline and out of bounds at the 30 yard line I'll tell you what it's only a few yards but considering what they had to start out of that play they'll take it and a good job of improvising here by Dondreal Pinkins had a guy draped all over him when he threw this ball Look at that throw and a great hands, as you mentioned. Hard I mean, a lot of athleticism in that right there. Now, people might th talk about Dundre Pickens. I'll tell you what, he's showing me a lot of poise out there tonight, even though he made that one mistake by fumbling. Pretty darn good grab by Turner, too. Couldn't get his body behind it. That was pure hands. He had to haul that in. Second down, six yards to go from the 30. Game still tied at seven apiece. Kenny Irons into the game. Play action to him. Pickens on the keeper and near a first down at about the 23 yard line and very noticeable on the play. Did you see him cover up that football after what <laughs> happened? A I few guarantee ago. you. I guarantee you coach Ozo had a couple of words about that. Well fellas this is really important that Carolina scores. Let me lay the last seven drives on you punt punt out on downs punt missed field goal a fumble and another punt. <laughs> it's time to put some more points on the board. Tell you, I tell you what, this thing went like this last year, and uh, I sure don't hope it goes the whole season like it did last year because those last five, six games were brutal. Carolina throwing the ball. Williamson on the grab inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. Close to another first down. And I think that speed we were talking about with Troy Williamson, we're wondering when he's going to get behind the secondary. That has a lot to do with the soft coverage of the corners. He's getting room to maneuver near the line of scrimmage, and you know he can break one if he slips through there. But I think that's why you see such soft coverage on the corners. They're worried about him getting it, getting deep. Well, Williamson's got man-to-man -man coverage. If you look at the bottom of your screen right now, they're tightening it up now. I tell you, look for a run. Pinkins to Irons up the middle. He's got some room. Spins down at about the five-yard line. It'll set up a second down. And between two and three yards to go. Nice run there by the sophomore, Kenny Irons. And doesn't Kenny Irons, as we see the replay, compliment Demetrius Summers' running style with his shiftiness. Demetrius Summers, a straight-ahead kind of guy. A lot of juking and jiving from Kenny Irons, his quickness, and it certainly paid off there. Yeah, but if I was, if I was in a raging cage, and I'd love to hit, I'd love to hit Kenny Irons before I hit Demetrius because he shows some different sizes out there. Now a staggered eye for the Gamecocks. Pinkins, handoff left side, Irons to the goal line and over, touchdown Carolina. I don't care how you do it, as long as you can do it. That's what it's all about, man, I tell you what. It's a long time coming. Seven yard scamper for number 22, Kenny Irons. Sophomore out of Bakula, Georgia, who gained 15 pounds of muscle in the offseason, wanted to be a tougher back, and he would look pretty tough and strong on that run. And that would be Decula, Georgia, homeboy. <laughs> well, it's good to see if you're a Carolina fan, it's good to see them run the football, and they ran it down their throats that time. Josh Brown lining up the extra point. The kick is up. And it is good, and the Gamecocks get the lead back 14 to 7 with a buck 38 to go in the third quarter. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Welcome back, Mike Morgan, along with Tommy Moody and George Rogers. And here is a look at the second Carolina touchdown of the night. Well, I tell you what, you got to give Kieran Irons a lot of credit. He runs hard. I guarantee you, even though that guy was blocking, he was determined that he was going to get in the end zone. And that's what we get a lot of 
out of Kenner Irons is right there. It's hard running. And a good push out block from, I think that was Hart Turner on the tight end position that really opened up that hole. Seven yards for the man from Deculia. Decula. 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 George, that's all right. That's too tough, man. I know. It's just like Duluth. Decula. Just, just put an R in it. We'll call it Dracula. From here on out, you mentioned the man's hometown the rest of the year. That's right. Homeboy. 14-7, <laughs> Carolina with the lead. And this crowd finally was something to cheer about. It's no. been since early on in the first quarter. No kid. <laughs> Kick off by Bowers, bobbled at the two, bobbled again at the five, now picked up and returned at about the 13-yard line. And going down for Lafayette is 81. That's Jarvis Murchison. And a tough return for Lafayette, bad field position. Tune in to CSS next Wednesday to see the encore presentation of the Gamecocks matchup with ACC Power Virginia. Coverage beginning at 9.30 p.m. Eastern right here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. The Carolina have to play a whole lot better when they come down here, Virginia come down here, too. Crowd getting loud here at williams Bryce, Carolina rushing six. Give up the middle, and it's a good thing that Mr. Smothers stumbled and fell there because had he been able to maintain his footing, he might still be running. Take a look at the scoring drive for South Carolina, just the second. Six plays. Boy, Travis Smothers had a lot of grass ahead of him there if he hadn't stumbled. 56 yards, 2 minutes and 14 seconds off the clock on that last Carolina touchdown drive. Second down, six yards to go. Lafayette working out of the eye. Two receivers to the left. Rolling out is Rakita looking that way. Finds Stamps on a big league hit by Teddy Crawford to hold him short of a first down. It'll set up a third and short. Well, that was a Robinson Crawford sandwich over there. I tell you what, if you're gonna come across, the, if you're gonna come across the field and catch that football, those defensive backs are showing us that they will lay a lick on you. That's one of those uh, kapow right there, you can call it. Oh, good hands by the receiver. You had to hold on to the football, You're right? A third down and one yard to go. Last play of the quarter, probably. Under center. The give right side here smothers a whole lot of room. Past the 30 and well past the first down marker as the Lafayette drive will continue as we've got one tick left showing. The clock will stop on the third down, but that'll likely be the last play of the quarter. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm saying some of the same things I saw last year. When those running backs get outside of us, it just seemed like ain't nobody there. And that does it for the third quarter. 15 minutes to play. Gamecocks, 14. Rage and Cajuns, 7. The conclusion coming up. Don't you dare go away. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Welcome back, everybody. Fourth quarter action about to commence here. Mike Morgan, Tommy Moody, and the Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers. 
So far, it hasn't been a pretty ball game, but if you like closely contested games, from that standpoint, it's been entertaining. Carolina holding on to a seven-point lead. Jerry Babb back into the game for Lafayette. With the handoff up the middle, it smothers once again number 16, the 5'7", 175-pound junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Again, Warwick Dunn's younger brother, and you know with that type of family tree, at bare minimum, this guy's going to have two things, speed and moves. And as you see on the screen, 4.3 yards per carry. Generally, that'll get it done in a big game. Yeah, they're starting to see a few holes in that 4-3 defense, but I, I'm looking for Carolina to make something happen in a minute. Carolina five-man front here. Another give up the middle, and it's a whole lot of room for Smothers. Look out, 40, 30, and finally knocked out of bounds by Rod Wilson, a touchdown-saving tackle. But, fellas, George, <laughs> even in your 40s, you could run through that hole and break off a big game. <laughs> I don't know how fast I could do it now, but I tell you what, this kid right here certainly took off with a lot of jets. That's a, that's a big old hole right there, yeah. Even that's, though, a, that's a Hummer hole, guys. Even, you could even, drive a Hummer through that yeah, one. Yeah. Even that, I might can't fit through that hole. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> 36 yards on the gain and Smothers now over the century mark. 17 carries for a buck 05 and Lafayette is going to burn a timeout here. Interesting timeout. He's got this momentum going after a big play. You want to line it up and run it right back at him again. This, this is one of the things that uh, Lou Hope said he was going to work with is the defense. Right now, those gaping holes right there, somebody's going to be at the have to be accountable for those holes like that. Well, you got to give them credit. They're tight ends and tackles. Uh, they're really opening up some holes. And, and quick hole on, on just a three or four yard carry, you can see a quick hole opening in there. And Gamecock defense going to have to shore it up to help uh, the offense win this football game. No doubt about that. You take a look at Coach Bustle there. And tell you what, the guy, his reputation, I remember years ago when uh, Brad Scott was on his way out at Carolina, and before any of us knew that Lou Holtz was going to be the guy, a lot of Gamecock fans wanted to see that man come back to Columbia based on his performance with that 94 team. And this is a guy that knows how to coach. There's no doubt about it. You take a look at rushing the football. Who would have thought in this ball game the edge would have gone to Lafayette, a team gentleman that averaged fewer than 70 yards a game on the ground last year. I would have bet it would have been two to one at least South Carolina, and that is not the case. And Lafayette is very much in this game. That's right. We said we still got the scares to go. First down and ten ball on the 28 yard line. High formation for the raging Cajuns. Carry up the middle this time. It's Chester Johnson. As Smothers and Mike, that is Lance Laurie in the game. For Carolina, they've uh, they're finally going to pull out the stops. He's got a tender knee, as everyone knows, and he made a, a stick on this play. Really stood up the ball carrier. Well, the problem, as I understand it, with Lowry is that, as you see, he's going to check out of the game now. He can go, but every time he goes out there, the knee just starts swelling up like a balloon, and you just hope that that's not going to be a recurring injury throughout the year. That's one of the best sticks of the game, right there. He's one of our best linebackers too. Carolina without the services of Ricardo Hurley for this game. A high ankle sprain is back. Rolling out left. Hot pursuit and a sack on the play for Carolina. Number 46, Marcus Lawrence. Folks, we are looking at a big time player right here. Good to have you on campus there, Marcus. Boy, he is really making an impact in his first game what, as a game cop. And I tell you what, though, what makes this play really go is this, this Marcus can run. And anytime you can get to the quarterback that quick, you're going to make some plays. He can run, and he's got a 6'3", 236-pound frame to boot. A first-team junior college All-American at Butler County. Third down and 17 for the Ragin' Cajuns. Trips to the right side. Babb working out of the gun. Carolina showing blitz. They bring it. Here it comes. Babb lost it up in the air. Jump ball situation knocked away by Dante Robinson. I tell you what, our best defensive player. He seems to be in the right spot at the right time, and he was right there to tap it away, and almost an interception by the Gamecocks as it was tapped towards the goal line. Well, 
Anytime you throw at Dante, I expect him to make some kind of play to the ball anyway because he's our best defensive back. Looked like they would try to go somewhere else, but uh, hey, this is Bustle team, so you can't really tell. 52 yarder, guys. And don't be too surprised. He's done it before, had a long of 50 last year, also made a 49 yarder last year. Here he is, Sean Kaminsky. The kick is up, line drive, but well short of the crossbar, no good. So this time, Kaminsky not able to show the powerful leg that he did so often a year ago. Again, several kicks over 40 yards last year and a long of 50. And consequently, by missing that field goal, good field position by the Gamecocks now at the 35. I tell you what, our kickers hadn't had that great luck like, 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 like the kickers have. I wish that we could get a kicker that we can even kick it, put it in that game, and we could have a chance to kick it. But, you know, our chance is going to come, though, in the future. So Carolina takes over a seven-point advantage. Still plenty of time in this ball game, so you, you don't even think about clock at this point. If you're Carolina, you want to put some more points on the scoreboard. We've seen quite a bit of uh, different weapons for Carolina tonight. Terman has six carries, Summers with three, Kenny Irons with seven, and Corey Boyd with one. And Tommy, what do you expect Skip Holtz and his offensive unit to do from this point on well an interesting decision here you can salt the game away with a time consuming 65 yard drive here uh, and the Gamecocks running game showed signs of really coming into its own in this half let's see if he goes with the running game and just tries to eat up the clock and salt this one away I guarantee you he ain't gonna sit back not and relax uh -uh. three wide outs for Carolina Pickens gets the tournament little razzle dazzle reverse play that's 13 for Carolina. Savelle Newton at the 40. Cuts back all the way inside the 35-yard line. The first play of the night for Savelle Newton. And now you know why everybody is so excited about this young man. And how about that rookie? I, I tell you what, you better watch the block that, that Pickens put on uh, put on that guy down there. I tell you what, what a great block he made. But I tell you what, he's got a convoy going down through that thing right there, ain't he? I like that. And he's a freshman, and we're going to have him for a lot of years to go. Tavell Newton, I Boy. tell you what, what a great player. Nishan Goddard did a good job of getting out and leading that play with a really a springing block. 32 yards on the game for Newton. A play he'll never forget, his first as a Gamecock. And then Pickens is sacked. Got caught napping there, had his eyes on a receiver. And out of nowhere comes the Lafayette. Defensive rush, that's 65, Marshall Del Estemir. Well, that's a coverage sack because he had time to release. He pumped it two or three times. I tell you what, when, you, when you're in the trenches, though, you're trying to make good decisions. I think even though um, he could have very easily fumbled that, so he, he, you know, just to get down with the ball was good enough. Second down, 15 yards to go. Pinkins looking over the middle, now goes into the flat. Complete to Turman. Turman with a leap at the 20 inside. Out to about the 16-yard line. It should be enough for another Carolina first down. It might be just short. No, he's a little bit short. But that's still a good extra. That's still an excellent play. How he looks downfield and then finds his little screen guy. I tell you what, still a great play by Carolina. It was so great I was going to give him an extra 10 yards, <laughs> fellas. But that's actually to the 25, not the 15. So it will be... A couple of yards short, it'll set up a third down and two. And a good job by 72, Jonathan Alston, another of the Gamecocks' talented offensive lineman, getting out and leading that play. Alston, the right guard for Carolina, snapping it is Strickland. Pinkins under center. A receiver each way, Turman the lone back. Five on the play clock. Pinkins to Turman, right side, inside the tackle after the 15 and down to the 13 yard line. Dacus Turman with a good run. And it's another Carolina first down. And even better than the run, the checkoff at the line of scrimmage by Dondrell Pinkins. Well, I'll tell you what, this, this, those running backs have been running hard all night long. And it's good to see the Carolinas starting to get some movement up front so those guys can get some running room. Because uh, the Raging Cajuns have been coming with their defense the whole night. Brian Brownlee, the backup tight end, doing a good job blocking. Even Troy Williamson, the receiver, getting in on the act on that play. First down and 10 from the 13. Carolina up by seven, trying to extend the lead. 
to Terman. Up the gut, nothing doing. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Boy, he was nailed by, boy, he might have to help me with this one. Marshall, Dallas DeMeyer. Sounds good to me. And he I came down with the football. He actually had the football when that play was over, so the Gamecocks might have gotten a break. I tell you what, these names from Louisiana, man, they're hard to pronounce, man. I guarantee you. Carolina rushing the football 14 for 44 in the first half, 13 for 83 here in the second half. Got a one-on-one -on -one situation to the left. Instead, he goes that inside screen to Williamson again, but this time, Lafayette read it. Yeah. We're lucky we got by with that one. Anytime you run that play, it's always scary because there's a lot of bodies around the football. It's a dangerous pass, but Carolina made it work to perfection in the first quarter for the first touchdown. You see Carolina on third down, four out of 11. Four wide formation here. Pinkins rolling out left, hot pursuit, and he will go down for a big loss on the play. It's going to set up a long field goal. And again, that same man, Tommy, Marshall DeLestemeyer, number 65, a freshman out of Louisiana. And he really got the best of Jeff Barnes in the interior line there and just beat his man and got back there for a big sack. And this is this is a question mark for the Gamecocks, the field goal game. Let's see what happens. Well, lining it up is oh. Josh Brown. 38 yards. The kick is up, and it is hooking left no good. Something Carolina fans saw quite a bit of last year. And this year, another missed field goal. Of course, Dan Weaver. Not playing in this game. Brown handling all the kicking and punting duties. Carolina up 14 to 7. More to come here on CSS. <laughs> Welcome back. Live action. Lafayette with the Football at their own 22 yard line, a little over nine minutes to play. The quarterback is bad. He gives it off to Smothers. Smothers dances and refuses to go down. Made something out of nothing. He's been doing that for most of the night, already over 100 yards. A guy that we talked about in the open of this ball game to look out for, Travis Smothers. Gamecock defense did not wrap up. He's too good a back to not bring down with that first hit. Yeah, and uh, running back's gonna run real hard. I don't care who, what kind of running back you got. They're gonna run hard. You gotta make those tackles. Hold on to them. Second down, six yards to go. Carolina fans still holding their breath in this one. This game is far from over yet. Fake on the reverse, keeping the football for Lafayette. Well, you can say one thing. Um, the clock is starting to, to count for both teams now. Whoever had the ball last looked like going to be the one that scores. I guarantee you that. And that was Bo Thompson on the tackle of Smothers. 18 carries, however, for 109 yards. And the average, which is the number you always want to look at, 5.7 per carry. That's a sign of a good running back. And the guys in the white jerseys are the only ones who thought that would be possible tonight. What a night he's had. Third and six, Carolina playing straight up, 4-3 defense. Little pass play to the near sideline. Carolina was looking for the play to go the other way. Pass was caught by the fullback, Wayne Stein. And Stein is one of those guys, he's a fullback, but last year, Third on the team with 20 receptions, hardly ever carries the football. And that is, unfortunately, that is Marcus Lawrence. I've got think, defense can ill afford to lose anybody else. Well, I, I, I think he, I think when he hit him, he kind of, kind of knocked the breath out of himself because it looked like he was the one that made the tackle. Let's hope that all, that's all it is. Well, that was a great, greatly designed play. See, he came in there and gave, made a company. great hit on him, and. Uh, 
But you know, sometimes when you make hard contacts like that, sometimes it hurts you more than yeah. it hurts the other guy. You worry about a shoulder right there. No doubt. Looked like Thorne piled up on him a little bit after the hit. If it's not the shoulder, it could have been something else, but he's walking off okay, and hopefully he'll be fine. This is a position on the field which Carolina started off the year with so much depth, but then the injuries to Lowry, to Ricardo Hurley, and like you say, I mean, just can't afford to lose any more of those guys. Boy, the game he's had so far. Uh, boy, the, the Cajuns are right in this game, fans. 14-7, just 7-12 to go. Well, I still think it's the defense to lose, though. Man in motion coming near sideline. Bad play action, throwing, and incomplete. Again, good pursuit on the play. That's Shropshire, number 57 on the hit. He is the other newcomer who has been in on a lot of stops and a lot of hits so far tonight. Daryl Shropshire, 6'2", 299. You'll take a look at it here, Tommy. Good defensive pressure. Made him throw off his back foot. And it's hard to be on target when you do that. Yeah, and uh, you got to credit our defense uh, for, for getting in there and rushing the passer that time because we ain't did very much at this whole half. So another good play by Shropshire. Incompletion stops the clock, 6.57 to go. Lafayette with a second down and 10. Babb, all times a time, throws it through the hands. That one was a little too hot for Kenny Lewis, who had to leap and tried to snare it out of the air, but couldn't do it. It'll set up a third and long. Another big play in a very close ball game. Yeah, you got to give Ricky, Ricky Bustle a lot of credit. This, this guy came in with a game plan, and he's been faking Carolina out so far. I guarantee you they have played a fine, fine football game. Lafayette 0-45 lifetime against the Southeastern Conference. Man, quit saying that. But I, I tell you what, all you have to do is look at what they did against Arkansas last year. That's true. And they come to play. So this is the same situation. Seven down, just a few minutes left in the game. At Arkansas last year, they threw an interception. Third and ten. Three wides. Draw play. Nothing doing. Carolina read it all the way. 94, Preston Thorne in on the stop for Carolina. The redshirt junior out of Somerville. First time we've called his name tonight and for about the tenth time we've called Daryl Shropshire's name who was also in on the stop. <laughs> All right. All right, defensive coordinator over there, Okash over there, he's really giving the hey wait a minute sign. Wait a minute. <laughs> Another punt for Lafayette. It's been a tough day at the office for Grant Autry. This one bounces inside the 20, takes a Carolina bounce and they'll mark it dead at about the 19 yard line. 19 yard line where Carolina will take over first and 10 a little over six minutes to go in the game. Demetrius Summers lost his bearings there. He's standing on the 20. He must have thought he was standing on the 10 because he signaled fair catch to let the ball bounce behind him. You don't ever let a ball bounce on the 18 yard line. Well I'm sure the coaches had something to do with it. Fans you can email us at CSS at cable dot com cast dot com to find out when your favorite team will be on CSS. Please indicate the teams you are interested in, and we will email you every week with your team's upcoming schedule. First and 10, play action pass. Pinkins, I think that might have been another pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. It was. I don't know what that was. It didn't look very good. I know that. I couldn't really tell what it was. I don't know if his, it, I don't know if he tipped it or not. No, he threw it. I know he threw it real low. Yeah, that number four yeah, out there. Yeah, that, yeah he got yeah. a piece of it. He's played a good game. Stanley Smith out of Faraday. Yeah. I was going to say, if he didn't, that was one of the worst dunks you'll ever see thrown. <laughs> I ain't kidding. Second down and 10. Pickens to Irons. Nothing doing. Drug down. Maybe a yard. We'll call it third down and nine now as Carolina trying to milk some clock, but going to have to get couple first downs otherwise Lafayette will get at least one more chance. Well you're right this is crucial and first down play with net with no yardage really set them back and pressures on Dondrell Pinkins again. And I guarantee you if, if we mess around and give them the ball back and they score they're going to go for two points. Four wide set. Irons to the quarterback Pinkins right who's looking 
near sideline has Goodman one on one coverage almost made a sensational play but give credit to that Lafayette secondary I tell you what they have impressed me I thought Carolina might be able to pick on him a little bit but that's Terrell Fenton on the stop the sophomore out of New Orleans interesting call on third and nine and obviously it was his primary target too because he quickly threw the ball to him but certainly didn't work and the Gamecocks are going to have to fight for their lives to get out of this one. and this team right here is known for blocking kicks another punt by Brown so Lafayette feels back trying to get some blocking but again good pursuit for Carolina special teams that's Rasheem Monroe flag on the play one of the backup defensive backs for Carolina and we'll see what the call is it looks like a false start on Carolina I'm sure Ricky Bustle's happy right where he is you would think so <laughs> unless he's confident of blocking another kick <laughs> I'm like you he'll take it right there where he is illegal formation against the offense only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. First down. Boy, how many times last year did we see that? The six men on the line of scrimmage. You have to have seven. Not so much on special teams, but on offense. That play was called, it seemed like, a record amount of times last year. Well, fasten your seatbelts, guys, because we're going to have a finish. A strong one. A little more than five minutes to play. Carolina's defense back out on the field. They've been out there a lot. It's a good thing. They've got some depth because there's going to be some tired bodies by the end of tonight. Bab working out of the eye. A little chicanery on that play. Give us to stamps on the end around, but Carolina sniffed it out. Exactly. No gain on the play. It'll be second and long. I'll tell you what, that guy missed him in the backfield. On the, in, in the. Um, if he didn't get him, if he got him in the backfield, that would have been on a super play then, but uh, we kind of missed him on the outside. There. He almost caused a fumble on that exchange, but luckily for the Cajuns, that didn't happen. So second down, 10 yards to go. Ball still at the 49-yard line. Jerry Babb, number 15, the quarterback for Lafayette, out of the gun. Three receivers set. Looking over the middle for Stamps and threw it behind him. Threw it behind him, and now a flag comes in. That's holding. Got to be. Boy, Babb was absolutely nailed when he delivered that ball. And it is a hold on the Ragin' Cajuns. So that'll back him up. Ten more. And Lafayette. Although we've seen a number of draw plays tonight, in all likelihood, they're going to be in a passing situation. Holding against the offense. The field is 10 yards from the previous spot. Still second down. That's the first one they call all night, ain't they? I think you're right about that, George. You know, if Ricky Bussell's got something up his sleeves, this is the time he's going to pull it out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, first holding call and only the third penalty on Lafayette all night long. As you see on the graphic for Carolina, six penalties on the Gamecocks. Second down, 20 yards to go. Ball spotted at the 41 yard line. Man in motion, that's Lewis working the slot. Bab instead goes out into the flat, finds his back. Pass is complete. That'll get some of the penalty yardage back. Knocked out of bounds by DeAndre Island. And an injured Cajun. I tell you what, this is a long throw. I mean, he throws across the field right there, and then he got some yards out of it. But look at um, uh, uh, Dante come over and, and, and cover and get that guy down. Now, he's a, he's a good safe tackler. That's Chester Johnson being attended to. Got hit on the shoulder really, really hard. Right now, he is down for the count on the Carolina sideline. Well, we're under five minutes to go, guys, and I don't think this crowd of 82,000 people thought that 
They'd still be biting nails here late in the fourth quarter against Lafayette, but you just never know. It's the beauty of college football. And that's why all the Carolina fans hadn't left yet, because we, they know we're not out of the woods yet. Well, the Raging Cajuns, if, regardless of how this game comes out, and they've definitely got a shot to win it here in the final minutes. They have really acquitted themselves well, played a very good game, and uh, Ricky Bustle's got to be proud of those guys. A good, a good sight as Johnson is able to run back to the Lafayette sideline by his own power. Both teams two and two last year in games decided by seven points or less. And right now, that's the kind of game that we're looking at. Third down and 13, big play for the Carolina defense. 33, Jeremiah Garrison lined up at middle linebacker. Lafayette trips to the right. Look out for number two, Fred Stamps, back. Bad back to pass, looking deep over the middle. There is Stamps, but it's incomplete. Redwell by the Carolina secondary, including number 16, Jamesha Jackson. Another sandwich job out there, Jamesha Jackson. And Dante Robinson had him well covered. Really no way to get that ball in there. I, I tell you what, when you got them two defensive backs back there, man, that's what it's all about. You got to have two guys back there, and we got two guys back there. That's still, that certainly helped a whole lot where we had last year, when we had just one person back there. Lafayette will punt it, and set back to return is Demetrius Summers at the four, makes a move at the five, at the ten, and finally drugged down by about four white jerseys at about the 13-yard line. Risky play by Summers, fielding the ball in his own four. 4.22 yeah, to go in this one. Carolina clinging to a seven-point lead. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Welcome back, Mike Morgan, Tommy Moody, along with George Rogers. Right now, Carolina with two allies, the scoreboard leading by seven, and the clock at four minutes and 22 seconds left. Would like to be able to run some of that down here as they run it on the first play, Dacus Terman. But again, Lafayette, well, that front seven for Lafayette, gentlemen, has been very good tonight. All the way across the line. I mean, they ain't got nothing to be embarrassed about. And I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry to say, guys, we still got some more work to do. <laughs> well, you know, Ricky Bustle, Ricky Bustle knows the Gamecocks want to chew up clock. They've forgotten all about winning by a comfortable margin. They just want to win this game. And let's see what Skip Holtz does to try to get a big first down. Shotgun formation. Terman the lone back. And Carolina's going to throw. Pinkins, safe pass to Terman on the screen. Got some blockers downfield. Pass the 25 out to the 27-yard line. It'll be a Carolina first down. <laughs> I tell you what, guys, that look that's a pretty good play and a pretty good play call. I tell you, if we don't get if we don't get that, then I tell you what, Carolina's looking looking like we're gonna be in trouble. Anytime you can get that back outside and make good moves like that right there, you're gonna have a good play. And that, that 10 yards helps us out a whole lot. That's a good job of deception by Pinkins on that play. Look to his left, look to the middle, set up the screen perfectly, and then toss it to his right. Strickland number 74 and Jonathan Alston 72. Providing the downfield blocking to really make that play happen as well. First and 10 now at the 27 yard line as the clock continues to tick. Muhammad. A little end around play to Muhammad who lunges forward. Oh, they're going to mark his knee down at the 35. Otherwise, he might have had the first down. But there you see some of the speed from Taki Muhammad. I tell you, it was a real good run to right at the very, very end. I tell you what, if his knee don't go down, that is a great run. Well, Muhammad hasn't caught a ball tonight. Recruited as a defensive back, led the way in the spring game with seven grabs for 149 yards. Dacus Terman, a good job there pushing out the cornerback to free him for that game. He's a hard runner and a good blocker. Second down and two. Two receivers near sideline. Handoff on the play to Kenny Irons. A modest gain. Very nice. Each team with two timeouts left. And you got to figure Ricky Bustle's starting to think about using one of his. I tell you right now, that ain't no first down unless they're going to give it to us. Uh, it looks from here about third and a yard. Mm, 
Looks like about a length of the ball short. Yeah. As the chain gang makes their debut tonight. About eight inches. Uh, you both were closer than I was. Brian Burnett on stats. I think he wins the pool. He <laughs> he had six inches. Everybody pitch in. It's great to see Brian Burnett again. He's done a great job for us tonight with the with the spotting and the stats. Well, let's see if we get a quarterback sneak. I've been saying it all night, and we ain't got one yet. What do you guys think? I'm gonna say you got a quarterback that big. Go straight ahead. No doubt. <laughs> Pinkins on the give a first down it's always easier to guess it when you wait till the play <laughs> happen then offer it I've never missed when I wait till after the fact Pinkins should have it easily the good news is it's a first down it'll stop the clock temporarily but then Carolina will be able to milk about another 20 seconds off the clock Carolina's about one first down away from putting this one on ice and a timeout now called by Ricky Bustle and the Raging Cajuns that leaves them with just one left and two minutes to go so an artificial two minute warning you don't have that in the college game but it acts just like a two minute warning as he calls it with exactly two minutes to go and guys uh, Carolina right now in very good shape but I tell you what this was a Hard fought, game. hard fought game and much closer than we anticipated and no doubt. You know, everybody's going to be talking about what Carolina did wrong and certainly they, they've got some things to work on like you mentioned but Lafayette uh, has done some things well tonight and you have to give them some credit also. Well a win is a win and if it occurs and Lou Holtz will pass his mentor Woody Hayes in the all time victory list there it is there. And you know what? 238 wins and if this Raging Cajun ball club has anything to do with it, and they're still in this game, it won't happen, but the odds say it will. We'll see what happens. And, and, and just to think that Lou Holtz deserved it, too. I mean, he, the, he took this team that was really broken down last year, and at least he came back, and they've and they shown flares of, of goodness, but they just haven't done anything. Lou, a master of rebuilding. The only time he did not succeed was one year, 1976, when he tried to take over the New York Jets and then we got back in college ball. <laughs> First down and 10 for Carolina. Kenny Irons the lone back. He gets the feed. Runs it up the middle. And scampers for about four or five yards. That clock will continue to tick. Lafayette now down to their last timeout. And they are not going to use it here. It doesn't appear. Well, uh, I tell you, how is Skip offense working out tonight? Well, George, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, yeah, so far they've struggled. I mean, let's uh, let's face it. I think we all thought 14 points that that would be about the the score at the end of the first or second quarter, not the end of the game. But a lot of people in new starting roles, and looks like Carolina still seems to be getting some of the rust off as Irons gets the handoff again. And Lafayette will burn their final timeout with a minute and eight seconds left to go. It'll be a third down and four. And if Lafayette has any chance of coming back in this game, they'll have to stop Carolina on this play. Well, not to beat a dead horse, but I'm sure Skip Holtz's biggest disappointment was not setting up the throwing game with a good ground game because, as I mentioned at the outset, I expected, I thought you could bank on Carolina running the ball down the throat of the Raging Cajuns. And, you know, let's don't keep saying negative things about South Carolina. Let's give credit where credit is due. Those guys have come and played their hearts out. Coach Bustle had them ready to play and give them all the credit in the world, and the game's not over yet. Yeah, and I can tell you one thing. You guys, y'all, yeah, you be frank and I'll be honest. <laughs> I tell you what, you guys are really hitting the nail on the head, and uh, we, we all want Carolina to do real good, but this this, this is a raging Cajun team came in to, to play football, and they've shown us tonight. Take a look at the rushing yards. Carolina 139 respectable maybe not as, as much as they hoped for I don't think anybody thought Lafayette would get 135 and you know that's been what's kept uh, Carolina in this ball game and of course uh, for Carolina 95 of those yards have been in the second half in the first half in the 40s and one thing I think has been overlooked you know, you've seen some pretty big plays and some good rushing yards by the Raging Cajuns let's don't forget 
their only touchdown was on a special teams on a blocked field goal right. the last play of the half. So in that regard, the Carolina defense has held up well. And, and that is the other story. I, I mean, Carolina's defense and, and the scorebook, it won't show up this way, but for them, it's a shutout. They pitched a shutout here tonight. I think uh, Carolina fans have to be very excited about a couple of new players, Marcus Lawrence and, of course, Shropshire both played very well tonight. Pinkins on the keeper, and he looks to be short from here. He is. So Carolina's going to have to punt it away. And is there anybody not expecting Bustle to send the house here? <laughs> well, if they, if, they, if they kick it, he's definitely going to send the house. But I think Carolina's going to try to hold on to the ball and try to get this last play in. They call their second up. time out here. Let the clock run down. Well, if you run a play and you don't make it, I mean, Lafayette gets the ball back, the, stop, the clock stops. That's kind of a risky move. I would think you'd have to oh, punt yeah. it away here. Yeah, I think he's going to punt it yeah. away. He's just going to let Dondrill call the timeout. And then hold your breath on the punt rush. Yeah. And the timeout is called with 16 seconds to go, and now you're starting to see the special teams unit get ready to get on the field. And if ever there were a time where that line and the deep snapper, Ike Crowfoot, if ever there were a time that everybody stay on the same page, make sure you know who you're, who you're blocking, and make sure the snap is true, this is it. No Boy. question about it. And these guys are real good at blocking punts and blocking field goals. They got, they got some good things going for them now. In years past, this would be a perfect setup for Ryan Brewer on the fake as he would line up right behind the guard there. But there uh, won't be any fakes tonight, I don't think. No. Let's see this. Oh, no. Let's see how they're going to set up the formation to protect the punter here. Well, the Raging Cajuns with a 10-man line. Carolina's got three to help protect the punter. The kick is off cleanly. And it'll go all the way inside the 10. Missing the first tackle and then finally going down. He didn't give him room to At the 10. Good luck. He didn't give him room to catch it. That's uh, what the referee called. They might have. They might have called contact before the ball got there. Right. Yeah. We'll see. We'll well, see a replay. Well, of they it. got rid of the halo rule, so that's got what it's got to be, right? Yeah. It's got to be contact before the ball got there. There is. There is no halo rule. That was the biggest change in college football this year. The elimination of the six feet to the two yards you had to give the receiver of punt returns. I think they call this uh, not giving the receiver room to catch it. Kick catch interference against the kicker team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Now, now, th now that goes back to a couple years ago. They have changed. The, if you so much as touch the guy before he gets the ball, that's 15 yards. So they're saying he touched him beforehand, which that replay doesn't really indicate. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he got there a little bit early. I'm, I ain't just trying to say that, but I look like he did. Almost a late hit, too. Another look at it right here. Right oh, there. man. I think he caught it before there was any contact. Well, I, I know, but he still got to give him room, though. All right, four seconds, guys. Regardless, final play here for Lafayette. They need 78 yards. Back to pass, Bab lets it go. Carolina back there deep. It's knocked up in the air and hits the ground, and that's your ball game. South Carolina starts off the season with another victory. Exhale, guys. Defeating Louisiana Lafayette 14 to 7 as Lou Holtz now eighth all time with 239 career NCAA Division I victories. As the two coaches shake hands and Ricky Bussell, I'll tell you what, he's got nothing to be ashamed about the way his team performed. It'll be a, a pretty pleasurable ride back to Lafayette despite the loss. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. One thing I got to say is about it's Carolina. We're going to have a long season. We got some people who play in the SEC. And I guarantee you, a lot of them is, might be a little bit better than the Raging Cajuns. Well, it's, a, it's one of those good news, bad news things. You want to open up with a win, but you want to play well. And uh, I think the Raging Cajuns really came to play and played. I, won't, I don't want to say over their heads, but they took it to the Gamecocks tonight. And they clearly anticipated winning this football game. You could tell from the outset. But South Carolina's got a lot of wood to chop to get ready for next week. A nationally ranked Virginia team coming in. And uh, defense gave up some big plays, did not give up the touchdown. 
offense has got to get the ground game going again. You know, we say that, but, and Mikael Goodman really the big surprise on offense, Mike. Yeah, six grabs for 66 yards for Goodman. I don't think uh, a whole lot of people were expecting that. Troy Williamson had a, a pretty good day with four catches and of course the touchdown. And we got a chance to see a number of the running backs for Carolina as well as the Gamecocks. It wasn't pretty, but a win is a win. Carolina 14, Lafayette 7 as the Gamecocks start off 1-0 in 2003. Our thanks to George Rogers, to Tommy Moody, Tom Smith, and everybody else involved. Mike Morgan saying so long from Williams-Brice Stadium.